when taking measurements, precision is going to be important in every situation. Precision helps to ensure that your object that you need to measure is carefully documented. If you are trying to manufacture something, precision is important. Otherwise, you have no way to ensure consistency between all of the objects you are manufacturing. So when dealing with precision, it's important to understand what a dial caliper is. A lot of people are familiar with using a ruler, but precision is not very easy to achieve on a ruler because it's only as precise as the lines on the ruler. If you have anything that falls between the lines, you're just guessing at the actual measurement and you could be off. So for precision purposes, a dial caliper is important. Here is an example of a dial caliper, a traditional dial caliper, and let's look at the different parts here. We have the dial itself, and then we have what's known as a dial adjustment knob. The dial adjustment knob allows us to help calibrate the dial if the arrow is not pointed at zero. We'll take a look at how to do that. Over here we have a thumb wheel. The thumb wheel is how we open and close the dial caliper. When you find a measurement that you're happy with, you may want to clamp down the dial by turning this knob. When you clamp this down, this dial will not move. That helps to ensure that if you need to move or set the dial caliper down, you don't accidentally alter the measurement. Off to the left, we have an external jaw and an internal jaw. These are two of the pieces we would use to take actual measurements. On the far right is a depth rod. The depth rod allows us to take measurements as well. All of this is on the beam here. Now, if we look, we will notice that the dial caliper is numbered from 0 all the way around to 99, meaning that there is 99 individual measurements on this dial. That's going to be important. On the beam, we're going to see a series of numbers extending out. Some of the numbers are going to be raised above the other numbers. The raised numbers are our whole inches. The lowered numbers are tenths of an inch. And that makes these hundredths of an inch or even thousandths of an inch. So we would use a combination of the numbers on the beam and the number on the dial in order to take a measurement. So let's do that. Let's take a measurement. Let's measure that di that dice, or why am I saying dice? That linking block, okay? So I'm gonna pick this up and I'm gonna hold it. I'm gonna hold this side with my left hand, this side with my right hand. That's just a safety measure to ensure that I'm holding on a device because these points are sharp. They can hurt. I'm gonna go ahead and starting from zero, I'm going to make sure that my dial is actually pointed to zero first. Now, right now it is, but let's say that I took the measure that at some point I come in here and my dial looks like this. When closed, notice the arrow is not pointing to zero. So I'm going to turn this to loosen it. And then I'm going to rotate this until I get that arrow lined up perfectly with zero. I like to aim for it to look like one solid line instead of two separate lines. Now, it's not gonna hurt if it's just slightly off like this, but if you can see white space between the arrow and the line, then it means you could probably adjust that to make it a little more accurate. Once it's ready, I'm gonna tighten this down and I'm good to begin measuring. I'm gonna open this dial up by using the thumb wheel and adding a little pressure and sliding it open. I'm going to slide it far enough open that I can stick the linking block inside and then I'm going to close it again. I want to close it with just enough tightness that it holds the block. Notice here that if I continue to apply pressure, I could make that dial go down even further. But at this point, that means I'm potentially squeezing on this plastic, which can bend a little bit, which means it's not a very precise measurement. So again, I'm going to open, close down until it's closed just enough 
that it doesn't fall out. If it falls out like this, then I need to tighten it just a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm gonna read my measurement. I'm gonna come first to the beam and I'm gonna look for these raised numbers, the raised numbers that I mentioned over here. And right now I see a zero and when I come all the way across, I can't find a one. So I'm not finding another raised number. So that means the first number of my measurement is zero. The next number of my measurement is going to be one of these lower numbers. Now I can see the 8, but there's a problem with that. If you look carefully, you'll notice that the lines follow the numbers, which means that I can see the 8, but I cannot see the line that follows it, which means I haven't actually crossed that line yet. An easy way to check this is to look at the dial. You'll notice that on the dial, I have not crossed zero yet. I'm to the left of zero, which means instead of using this eight, I'm gonna come over here and use the seven in front of it. And that's gonna be my next number. A good rule of thumb is if you can see that last number, look at the dial. If you're in the top half of the dial and you're left of zero, that number does not count. Use the previous number. If you're at zero or past zero, use that last number because it, you've crossed the line. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and open and take this out. Oh, my bad, sorry, I wasn't done yet. Next, I'm gonna look at the dial. On the dial, I can see that I'm at about 86. So I'm just gonna write 86 down. And that is my block width. 0 0.786 inches. You might find that you get very close to that if you were to measure a three-quarter inch leaking block at home, but it also shows a flaw. These are three-quarter inches. If that is truly exactly three-quarters of an inch, I would get 0 0.750, and I did not. And that's part of the unprecision, imprecision of the manufacturing process in how they make these blocks, each one may be slightly different. Okay, so now I've got my block width, but what about the width of the hole? For that, I'm gonna use the internal jaw. I'm gonna close the clamp all the way down, or close the dial caliper all the way down, and I'm gonna take the internal jaw and put it inside that opening. I'm then going to open this back up until it stops. And when it stops, I get, I'm, I'm about right here, so let's take our measurement. I'm at zero. I can see the three. I can even see the line, and I'm past zero, which means my measurement is 0 0.3. And looking up here, three, one, zero. So my whole width is 0 0.310 inches or actually just, just over uh, three-tenths. Now, that's two measurements. What if I want to measure the depth of that hole? How deep is it? One option might be to do this, under the idea that all of the holes are equally deep. But the problem with measuring it this way is that's not very precise. And if we're going to use a precision measuring tool, let's do it the precise way. So, I'm actually going to come over here to that depth rod we talked about, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up more than I need to. I'm going to flip this around. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into the hole, and I'm going to use the block to push back on the dial caliper. The reason I do this is because I know that's touching the bottom of the hole. If I try to use my thumb wheel to estimate, I may not actually recognize when I've touched the bottom. So this helps to increase the precision by using the block to push it back. Now I have a measurement. And my measurement is 0 0.2. I can't even see the 3 yet, so I'm going to come over here. And I've got 4 
four. And that is my whole depth. 0 0.244 inches. So that's three different ways to take a dial caliper measurement. But what if I told you there's actually a fourth way? I want to measure how high this knob sticks off the surface. Now, I could use the depth rod, but this opening is open, so that's not very precise. And I could try to eyeball it like this, but that's not very precise. And neither would this be because I can be off. So the more precise way to do it is going to require me to open this up and flip it over. And we'll notice we have two plates here that are separated. When closed, these plates line up. When opened, they do not. I'm going to place the block here. And then I'm going to push this closed until the second plate is touching the top of that knob. This is called a step measurement, kind of like steps in a stair. Now, I'm going to come back here and take my measurement. I have 0 0.2, and since I'm right of 0, that 2 counts, 0 0.201 inches, and that is my knob height. We can quickly see, with taking all these measurements, how the dial caliper can do some things that a ruler cannot which is why this is a useful tool for precision measuring, particularly with small objects. Now let's talk a little bit about care and maintenance. We already talked about how to adjust the dial here, but also let's talk about making sure you're careful with it. These, two, these four points are sharp, as I've previously mentioned, so I'd like to carry this around like this when I'm taking a measurement. If I'm not taking a measurement, I'm going to use the box it came in, which is lined with foam, in order to carry it longer distances. This thumb wheel is also a point of use that can eventually break. So it's important that you do not try to apply too much pressure. It only takes a little bit and it'll come with practice. The other thing that can cause this to break is if this is clamped down and someone tries to force this open, because it won't move, or it won't move without a lot of force. Enough force to potentially break this plastic. The other thing is, um, every once in a while, this dial, when closed, the arrow may be pointing off to the side. And I've seen people turn around and set the dial calipers aside as if they're broken. They're not completely broken. All we have to do is loosen this and rotate the dial so that the arrow is pointed to zero and the dial caliper can still be used normally. Okay, so here are the parts of the dial caliper, the four different ways we can take a measurement with it and how to use this carefully and take care of preventing a few possible um, points of damage. Thank you for watching.